I've recently started a small vinyl record collection. I have an inexpensive record player, and it was really inconvenient to have to hook up a portable speaker every time I wanted to listen. I decided to build a modern style cabinet that would accommodate both my record player as well as built-in speakers. Additionally, I thought it would be useful to include some storage space and thought it would be cool if I could turn the cabinet into a mini bar as well. I'd like to thank DAP Products as well as the Home Depot for sponsoring this video. Keep watching to learn how I built a simple record player console. I had some leftover 3 quarter inch plywood from some other projects, so I used those panels to determine the size of the overall cabinet. I did end up needing to purchase another sheet of plywood, which I had broken down roughly into 16 inch wide boards at my Home Depot. Even if you have a table saw, I think it's much safer and much easier to break down large panels with a circular saw before you make your precise cuts. I've been using the AccuCut track system from Craig recently, and it actually makes such precise cuts, I find I don't even need the table saw most of the time. Whenever building any sort of box type furniture, it's really important that everything is nice and square. One trick to help with that is if I'm going to be cutting components at the same length, I will measure and cut the first one and then use that as a reference for the second piece. That way I'm ensure they are the exact same length. As a budget builder, my favorite hack is iron-on edge banding. If done correctly, edge banding can make inexpensive plywood look like solid laminated panels. If you head over to the blog and check out the building plans, I'll indicate what sides of which panels need the edge banding. You don't have to cover every surface. You really only need to cover the edges that are going to be exposed. Another tip when building box style furniture is to sand each panel before you assemble it. Once they're together, it's much harder to get into every little nook and cranny. Like I said in my brass handled cutting board video, I've been trying new joinery techniques. And so on this project, I wanted to experiment a little bit with dowels. That meant building from the inside of the cabinet out. I started by assembling the internal shelf dividers. I determined where I wanted the dividers to intersect and then carefully made my measurements to indicate where the holes for my dowels will be drilled. With dowels, I found it's much easier to invest in some simple tools like a self-centering dowel jig and stop collars for drill bits. Getting the dowels in the holes was not the difficult part in joining these two panels together. With dowel joinery, you're relying heavily on glue and the clamping pressure holding the panels together while they dry. I came up with an arrangement using blocks screwed to my workbench and clamps to try to hold the pieces together, but it really wasn't that great. I mean, it worked and it got the job done, but looking back, I probably should have used ratchet straps instead. While the internal dividers dried, I started to assemble the exterior of the carcass of the box. Since they would be hidden on the underside of the cabinet, I decided to pre-drill and use screws and glue to join the panels together instead of dowels. Since I struggled a little bit with the dowels on the internal dividers, and I don't have very many long clamps, I decided to go back to what I was comfortable with and use pocket hole joinery to join the stretchers connecting the sides of the box. The next morning, I test fit the internal dividers inside the carcass of the box. 
I was shocked to find out that they were actually pretty square and they fit really nicely. I decided to use dowels again for this step of the build, especially because I could get clamps on both sides of the shelf and really give it even clamping pressure. You liking what you see? Make sure to hit that like button. And while you're at it, subscribe to my channel. Using some scrap blocks not only protected the surface of the cabinet, but it actually helped to distribute the pressure from the clamps as well, giving me even more even pressure. My design calls for a main shelf that runs horizontally across the cabinet that will hold the speakers and the record player. Since they could be hidden from view, I once again used pocket holes on the underside of this panel to secure it to the sides of the cabinet. The next piece to attach was the horizontal face frame, but before I could do that, I realized that I neglected to cut a notch in my vertical internal divider. It would have been really easy to use a jigsaw before I attached the divider to the cabinet, but I forgot to do so. And then I used a multi-tool and a chisel to knock out the square. Once again, because I could hide their placement, I decided to use screws and glue to secure the horizontal shelf to the internal dividers and to hold the internal dividers to the bottom of the cabinet. I connected the 1x2 face frame to the cabinet using more pocket holes and glue. The horizontal shelf has a divider separating the speaker area from the rest of the audio components. Before I could install the divider, I had to notch the corners using my least favorite saw, the dang jigsaw. Once the corners were notched, I applied glue to the edges and then dropped the divider in the location that I needed it to be. Since I was going to stay in this project, I was very careful about wiping off any glue squeeze out that would affect the way that the stain was absorbed by the wood. To hold the divider in place, I used 23 gauge pins as well as screws driven up from the bottom. I like the idea of an incorporated cabinet pole, so I used a speed square to mark out the rectangular area that I would notch to create a handle. Then I used the same stupid jigsaw to cut out the rectangular area. I took my time and it actually turned out pretty well. I'm kind of on a brass kick right now, so I decided to give the doors a little something extra and insert a brass inlay. Normally I would have used a router to cut a notch to accept the brass inlay but I couldn't find my quarter inch router bit anywhere. So I decided to cut a little groove with a couple of passes with my circular saw. I used brass C channel for the inlay, but I wanted to finish off the edges. I used a Dremel to cut a couple of notches and then just bent the ends over so that the end had a flat side instead of being open to the C-channel. Next, I gave everything a good sanding to prepare it for paint. I spray every type of finish I can. It really makes a big difference and makes your projects look much more professional, especially if you're building modern style furniture like I am. I have a couple of really old videos where I show my technique for getting a perfect finish especially when staining tough surfaces like pine and plywood. I picked up a set of vintage brass furniture feet from a salvage yard like five years ago, and they've been sitting in my garage ever since, waiting for the right project. Before I could use them though, they needed to be cleaned up a little bit with some paint stripper. Once the paint and finish was fully dry on my doors, I could add my inlay. I used Rapid Fuse All-Purpose Adhesive from DAP. It's designed to bond to almost any surface and sets in only 30 seconds. I lightly clamped the inlays in place just so they would have even pressure while they dried. 
The brass feet were easy to attach to the underside of the cabinet using 3 quarter inch wood screws. With tiny screws like this, I really like to use a drill with adjustable torque settings so I don't accidentally strip the head. I drilled a hole in the divider on the top shelf of the cabinet. That way wires and other components could be moved from one compartment to the other. I was a little worried about reverberation, so I decided to line the speaker compartment with foam. The spray can made it really easy to apply the weldwood contact cement to the back side of the foam before attaching it to the cabinet. I used a Craig concealed hinge jig to prepare the flip top doors for installation. I used full overlay hinges for the flip top doors and inset hinges for the doors on the face. To create a backer panel, I cut down a sheet of 1 8 inch hardboard. Then I attached it to the back of the cabinet using half inch 18 gauge brads. The last build of the project was to create the fabric wrapped screen that would go over the speaker area. I started by screwing together a simple frame from 1x2s. Then I wrapped a linen looking fabric around the frame and stapled it in place, like you would if you were upholstering a chair or seat cushion. I put the screen in place and it fit snugly, but I wanted to make sure that my kids wouldn't knock it out of place, so I secured it with a couple of 23 gauge pins. At this point, the cabinet was completely built. I just needed to clean it out to get it ready to insert all the audio components. I've been using my six gallon NXT wet dry vac from Rigid lately, and it's awesome. They've made a lot of really smart changes to the design that make it really simple to use. I designed the cabinet to accommodate these Bluetooth speakers perfectly. The foam lining the compartment made for a snug fit though, so I decided to remove the feet off the bottom of the speakers before dropping them in. I'll link to the specific speakers I used in the description box. Although the speakers are Bluetooth capable, I hardwired them to my record player in the adjoining compartment. Once the record player was installed, it was time to test it out. I am super impressed with these speakers and the way that the cabinet performs. I get crystal clear sound both on Bluetooth and through the record player. These little speakers might be inexpensive, but they can bump. If you really wanna get the party started, the lower part of the cabinet is perfect for mini bar storage. There's a link to the blog post in the description box below where you will find the full material list as well as the free building plans. Make sure to tag that like button and hit subscribe. Thanks for watching guys.